Travis the Boss Tables here is going to show you how to square your table. So the reason why your table may have came out of square is potentially if you broke one of these switches, bumped it with a piece of material that would then move the switch back and forth potentially, or let's say somebody hit a button they weren't supposed to or hit run and the gantry came back and collided with some sort of obstruction or there is just flat out too much debris on the rails and has not been clean. And essentially the, the mechanical power of the motor is not great enough to overcome the debris that's in the rails, but that takes a lot of neglect to happen. So that being said, essentially what controls your machine being square is the two sides, each motor, one on each side, and the home is set off of these switches. So by moving this switch back, it in turn moves the gantry as such. So if I move this switch back, it moves the gantry like this. So essentially, what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot in an X, basically make, try and create a rectangle and then measure square in that rectangle and continue to adjust these switches for and back until we get it within a few thousands. So that being said, the first thing you wanna do Get your program started and then drive your machine back. It does not, it does not make a difference if you're in plasma feather touch or plasma no feather touch, but I would prefer no feather touch. Oh, it's gonna throw an error because I don't have my controller on. Power indicator light, quick lesson for everybody. <laughs> Pulls out of that. And reopen, no feather touch. So, I remove e-stop, I drive the machine down towards myself. I want to put the x-axis in between the bolts. If you have a Pro Series table, you have a larger beam going across. But from here, what I will do is essentially loosen my gantry so I can allow it to relax and then after we adjust the switch we're going to tighten it back up. So you've got the bolts right here on the top that essentially hold the two independent beams from scissoring. So what we'll need to do is loosen all the bolts going across the top but pay special attention to this bolt right here. Only do one of these because your machine is set up with the parameters with this switch located in the position. So only one of these bolts, every bolt on the top, every bolt on the bottom as well to loosen these plates. And the gussets right here on the top. You wanna to loosen these four right here and then also loosen the bolts that then hold the beam from the outside. So there's quite a few bolts to loosen up, loosen them all up and then we're going to hit home Z. And then that will bring us to square. And if you simply, let's say, let's say you had a catastrophic collision and these switches are not moved in any sort of fashion, a guy can loosen the bolts, home it, and then tighten everything back up and it will bring it back to where we had it set from the factory. That being said, if you're replacing this switch due to some sort of issue or vice versa, you will then basically put the switch in and then square it, or home it, to lock it in a position, and then tighten all of the bolts, essentially locking that gantry in square after you home it, and then tighten them, and then we'll go through and we'll show you how we fix through the torch and all that. Okay, so now we've got our gantry loose. It is able to be set by the homing switches. Now we need to actually measure the machine. So, that being said, we use plates held down by J-bolts to keep them from moving, but a simple, you know, larger plate of steel will work just sufficient. You're gonna to wanna to measure what your allowable travel is. So basically, and you wanna be about as big as you can get. So 42 by 90 is what we're gonna use on this machine. So I then come back here and I will essentially minimize this. QCAD is already on WHC tables. Super simple to use. 
I then draw my square by size, width of 42, height of 90. I then drop it in. You can drop it in anywhere you like, not an issue. I will then create four smaller circles, quarter inch, one inch, whatever you want to do. Drop it right on the four intersections. There we go. So now I got my circles there. I will then hit File, Save As, Table Square. Name it whatever you like, but Table Square is good. Overwrite, yes. I then come into Sheet Cam, and in Sheet Cam, I will create a toolpath. And the toolpath is what's going to allow me to create four dots efficiently. So I will right click, bring in my new part, open up Table Square. Make sure it says inch. If you drew it an inch, lower left is good. Import. Now I can see that this is a goofy looking drawing because essentially I've got a square with circles on the edge, but the square is just to ensure that our circles are evenly spaced from corner to corner. And so I've got my four circles in the corner. Now what I want to do is go to Edit Contours, highlight two of my circles, right click, move to layer, leave it named a new layer, select OK, grab my other two. As long as I do not select the entire drawing at once, I can avoid selecting the large rectangle. Right click, move to layer, move it now. Don't create another new layer, just drop it in a new layer. You can rename the layer if you like too. Go to your drill bit, create new drilling operation. Make sure it says a new layer or whatever you named it and that your minimum and your maximum hole size are allowable for whatever circles you drew on the edge of your rectangle. So now I can see I have a toolpath created. It's going to go one, two, three, and four. If you want to change the order, you can hit edit start points, right click, quick cut sequence, and then click one, hit yes, two, three, four, essentially moving how the table is going to uh, start and finish the program. So right click, end sequence. From here, this is all I need to essentially create what is a squaring program. I will then go file, run post processor, save it as table square. I'll replace it right over it, select OK, minimize that. I'm going to go back into Command CNC. I already have it open, so I do not need to reopen it. Open Command CNC. Load in my program. Select Open. And I can see that my drawing is essentially kind of in no man's land, essentially from where my table is. But that's fine. I'm going to drive my machine close to my homing switches, four inches away on that axis, a few inches away on my Y axis. I'll hit Home X. It will then touch off, essentially setting that. I hit home Y, it will come back, touch off. Another quick note, you do want to ensure that essentially your homing switch, this plate right here will protect it if it becomes, basically if you drive your gantry in and you collide with the switch on accident, this plunger needs to be subset parallel with this face. This plunger is actually too far. So essentially we're going to take, loosen these two bolts up and move it back so that this is then flush with this face. Therefore, what can happen or what we're trying to avoid happening is if this switch is too far forward, you'll shove the plunger inside the switch effectively ruining it. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this switch back, make sure it's faced with the flush with the face, rehome it, and then tighten down our bolts, and essentially we're going to run this toolpath. So barring, let's just pretend that I actually moved this switch. I have a marker tape, and, and we use a fixture system, but this is much the same. Basically, you have your marker taped onto here, good and solid, so it can't move. I undo the marker, I then zero my work axis in the corner. So I travel my machine over, I hit 0x and 0y, effectively aligning my drawing to where my squaring material is. I then want to hit, if I hit run from here, everything will be fine. 
select OK, hit resume. Oops, sorry. I need to re-zero my z-axis because I'm a little bit off here. If it crashes down in the material or raises up too far, you need to re-zero your z-axis. So I hit 0z, so now I have triple zeros with my marker barely off of the material. When I hit run, it will then touch off. Now, if your machine stops, that's what it's supposed to do because essentially your torch is on, right? I should back up here, make sure your torch is off. So essentially you're not gonna pierce your steel. Now, I made a dot right there, my torch is on, it's giving me an error that basically says, I can't go anywhere because I never got the arc okay signal and my delay is still active because I have yet to strike a good arc. Hit disable torch and then your machine will effectively start traveling and create the dots themselves. So now I stop the machine and we're going to measure square. So essentially, you're going to take your tape measure and span it across the tape. Now, your tape measure itself, you're going to want to put this guy at essentially a number that is easy to, to measure off of. Well, there's the dot, our plate's a little dirty here. So I will then bring my tape measure to 12 inches, exactly. I will then come down to this end. Come down to this end, and let's say I'm at 111 and about a quarter. I will then pull my tape measure tight and use a digital caliper to make things easy to measure from 111 and then dial that in until you get that measurement. So that is 111 and 156 thousandths. I will then take a scrap piece of paper, draw an X, so this is 111 and then 156 thousandths. Now, let's say we measured down the table the other way, and this is 111 and 268 thousandths. This X right here is essentially, this, this leg of the X is essentially shorter than this leg. So, you have two options. We're either gonna move this switch in a little bit, or we're gonna move this switch back a little bit to even this travel. Now, let's go over here and look at this switch. So, this switch right here, we're unable to go forward any, we're actually too far forward, but all practical purposes. So we will take this switch and move it back. And essentially, the distance you're gonna wanna go back, this is about just over 100,000. So you're gonna wanna move this back an eighth of an inch and then Bring, drive your gantry home. You're gonna to wanna to drive your gantry home and essentially loosen up the gantry, let it bounce off the homing switches, tighten everything back up and rerun the same file. And that will then allow you to measure in between from A, B, C, and D and create that perfect square that we, that we cut every time.